All right. Up next, we've got uh, is it Philippe or Hitman himself. Mr. Dip. All right, what is going on? So you have a nice spread of work here. Sir Dip. Uh, let's start with this couch, which is six months old. Oh, so you're always updating your portfolio, I, I assume. This one is five months old, so material. Oh, it's a challenge. It's the challenge. I think maybe it's a, just a little on the strong side when it comes to the height information. As you can see, like a lot of the info looks like it's stretching. It's pretty stylized as well. Um, from this view, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I think just the, the scaling of it is really making it uh, hard to look realistic at this angle. He's the laundromat guy, yeah. This material is pretty cool. It's pretty impressive to see it like uh, with so much depth. I assume at uh, a lower angle where you would actually see like the the tiles or the I don't even know what you would the shingles. Yes, shingles, roof shingles. It's probably a little bit more like um, skewed, right? There's a bit of stretching happening. So definitely check it at that angle. It looks looks all right at this angle, so you might just be getting away with it, which is pretty impressive. Usually you get some pretty horrible stretching in that area. So that one's cool. I would say that it looks a little too much like a, uh, what do you what do you call it? When it comes to the way that they're bending and increasing. It looks more like they're sheets of, of thick cardboard that are wet and have been like molding. They've got the black mold going on and they're, they're kind of curling and stuff. So I'd look at like the way you're deforming them uh, or in the future, look at the way you deform these types of materials. Think about how they bend and stuff. 205% substance designer. Maybe, maybe that's why. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So this one's cool. I think Quilly Willy will appreciate this one. Look at that, Ben Wilson's corridor. Dude, that's hilarious. I remember standing in the corridor with him and he's like, I'm gonna make this. <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna make this hallway and it's gonna be super nice. And we were like looking at the wall, all the subtle like information and feeling the wall and stuff. Do you remember that, Ben? <laughs> Uh, it's weird. We're weird, man. Um, so in general, this is pretty cool. I like the the approach of how you did the chipped paint and the kind of darkening around it to kind of simulate that uh, the ambient uh, the ambient uh, AO that's happening under the paint where it's peeling from the wall. Um, to really push this, I think taking this material into your three D application and modeling a few torn pieces that you then place like at key spots just to help sell it and you're it's good you're good to go you'd probably want to make a bunch like a pile that happens down here too like i don't know 20 pieces and then just dupe it around a lot and because you made this in substance right you can just save out this material without the damage and then uh, apply that to those cards and you're good to go. Like you'll, you'll have almost no like visible seams and weirdness, especially at that scale. It's more about the, the way that the light hits it and the shadows that those little pieces would cast and the little bit of AO that you would get from it. In general, this looks pretty good though. It's pretty dirty and there's a strange seam here that just, it's it's hard to explain what's happening there. But yeah. No, this is cool. And the attention to the ground is is that's solid, man. Like where it meets the walls, you're getting a little bit of discoloration. And the roughness of the floor feels good. 
Yeah, the roughness of the floor feels really nice. You definitely captured that. Uh, where is it at here? There's always these areas that seem to be much less uh, rough. Even though they're, I don't know. It's it's just a range when it's in contrast to the to its other counterparts of of the same material. You get some really interesting light play that only you see on this type of surface. And when you see that, your brain's like, I know what that material is because you're seeing the the key features of what is is telling you the the ground was fun to make. It's basically like polished concrete, right? But you don't polish it flat. You're jealous of that ground? I can't remember what yours was, Ben. Um, yeah, pretty solid though. I think about like how these pipes uh, meet into the wall. And I guess if I had to say one thing, this door feels very um, odd. Like it just, it has the aging that you would expect if this whole place, like if all the paint was like peeled off. You know what I mean? Like it looks like it needs to be more of like a rusted metal that's not fully rusted yet. Like these doors have seen things. But yeah, when you can have a scene this empty, but it looks it looks good still, that's impressive. Oh yes, in the famous laundromat scene. So this this one's really interesting because like right off the bat you're like, oh, this is really it's interesting looking. Like there's a lot of stuff going on. I love the I love the signage pass, which is just like seeing how much it costs to do things, no smoking. There's there's rhyme and reason as to where the signs are and why they're there and it tells you what people experience when they come in even though the place doesn't really exist at all right i mean that that washer man you want to hear something creepy so that washer i'm like oh there's clothes in there immediately the color of those clothes i'm like expecting to zoom in and it's like a person like a human being just shoved in a washer <laughs> super dark i know i've been reading scary stories at night so from reddit they're great <laughs> brutal <laughs> okay what <laughs> um you're like yeah i guess it's a little terrifying vertex came out of the shadows for that one like what the hell <laughs> they call him the cleaner that's some stephen king stuff <laughs> all right sorry uh I digress. Uh, the money on the on the folding table, dope. That's great. Some story right there, dude. I would even say like, drop some money, money, some mummy, some money down here. Am I planning my next murder? No. Um. And I really need to see like a hamper full of clothes, or folded clothes. Like there's this right. I'd probably kill your computer to just have a basket and simulate like 30 pieces of clothing just falling into it. Either way, it looks pretty good. Uh, I think with the tables and the carts and stuff, you probably need to add some of that movement information and the roughness of the tile on the ground. That way you get the, the feeling that it's like it's been used a lot and stuff's moved around. And uh, let's see what else we got here. would be nice to see like either a purse or like someone's bag or backpack resting on something maybe a coin down here is that a puddle is that wetness right there oh it's so subtle i think if the tile was more diffused then you would be able to benefit from the the puddle Tej, what's up how you doing i freaked everyone out just a second ago so i'm trying to like reel back from it Oh, with these neon lights, um, these are interesting because they they always have like a a science to how they're put together. I I was talking about a murder in in someone's art scene. 
Yeah, Judd, that might be a little too risky. <laughs> Maybe if they weren't red. Um. Yeah, let me let me think here. So with how neon signs are set up, let's just like clear all this. We'll invert that so it's easier to look at. Um, okay, so so when you have like a neon sign, what do you have like open twenty four? So if you got open, this is gonna be terrible because I'm doing this with a pen. So if you think about this from the background or behind it, right? If this is gonna be hanging off of a wall, uh, it'll most likely have two points of contact that are wire and most likely quite thin uh, that are attached to a framework. I'm gonna use like a gray here so we can see it easily. That are attached to a framework that's like maybe like this, for example. Oh. And then uh, those are attached to this frame. Now this frame also is it attaching uh, to the neon at key points for it to connect to the tube. And then where these letters end they either, uh, from the side view, if it goes down like this, they'll either connect like this and then go behind the board and then connect to the other letter and then go in front of the board again uh, to be the next letter. And then the area that's behind here, like let's go with even darker value. The area that's behind here, I'm making this dark because that dark part is actually painted in a black so that you don't get the light leaking through it. And what's really cool is when you start getting ones that are like this that are quite old, you get uh, a little bit of a gradient buildup in these areas from like stuff building up inside. And then where the black paint is, you start to get a uh, little speckles, especially near the area where like it transitions to the light just because the black paint is starting to chip off. So those are like all those little tiny details and the way they're all connected together is like key to, to selling uh, neon signs. It's super detailed. I, like I'm like really into the, I did a lot of neon signs in, in a past project. Um, in general though, this is solid, solid. Maybe some roughness scratches around the area where people sit. Lots of sitting, waiting for your laundry, you know? Real strong though, real strong. So this one's pretty cool. This one implies a lot of information, even being very uh, minimal. How many signs have I stared at? No, I, it's only digital signs. Only digitally. Or with them off. You can look on YouTube and see how they're made and stuff. It's really interesting. It's a lot of info there. Uh, this so this one's really cool. I think the the branches up here are showing the uh, the lack of geometry. I can't do that song. Uh, the lack of geometry in here is is being exposed just because of the angles of it, and just adding a little bit more that are more camera facing, especially with the camera being so locked into the shot. It's pretty easy to just hide that. Uh, Shadows here, the light direction I like quite a bit. Maybe if it if it went down a little bit further. So like right now you've got like the light is ending here. Right? Let's just So your light is here and then it goes up the steps somewhere around like there. If it was a little bit lower, so you get a little bit more light play on the steps. That'd be pretty nice, but that that's more of like a personal personal taste. I think in general, it looks really cool. The reason I'm suggesting that is I like the idea of uh, more of these these highlights here. Oh yeah, no, this is totally working out. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm telling myself not to do that. I still think you should. Oh, 
Well, it's getting bluer. No. But yeah. Anywho. This is pretty good. I like this one. Maybe a, a bevel on the edge of this just to soften up that, that sharpness. Skyscrapers are weird, though. They're not very interesting looking, usually. Like basic ones, anyways. That video on neon signs? That might be one of the ones I watched. That's 10 months ago? No, that must be newer. Cool. Um, the one-way sign. Yeah, that uh, looks good. Walking sign's good. Depending on where you're at, country-wise and, and city, will change the way that this guy is depicted. Reflections would be uh, would be good. I'm wondering if like the reason they're not reflecting has to do with either the angle of the lighting or the types of materials you're using. This, I just noticed, this pattern here feels very odd to me. It just looks like uh, like you just decided not to map it or whatnot because it's so dark. Shadow edge on the pole. Like you're talking about how dark it is in here. Yeah, yeah. And if I turn this up just to see what's going on. Oh, this is like a galvanized metal back here. Interesting. See, by turning this up just a little bit, you get a, a bit more blue information in the scene, which tends to be a little bit more like photorealistic, I think just because the color of the sky. Oh, you're talking about this edge here. Yeah, that's a little harsh. They're pretty faceted though. I don't know if you've ever seen them up close. They're quite, like you just bevel that and you'd be good. But they are, I've seen them hard edge like that. And you can see it in the in this as well. Like what, like eight sided? Let me see if I can find something. Uh, but uh, I think that's, I think that's it for the portfolio. Your portfolio is quite strong. Uh, oh, this is interesting. I like this. This part here feels a little odd to me. Like maybe like removing these blocks here would uh, fix it because the way it terminates into this beam here feels strange. And then making sure that these line up with these because that freaks people out when they don't like, what? what? Why aren't they lining up? Ah. Let me see if I can find a, a reference image real quick here. Nope, I cannot. Or at least the areas I'm looking in does not show it. The unaligned thing kind of messes you up, dude. Oh, no. <laughs> Help me. Anyways, thank you for submitting your portfolio. It was pretty, uh, it's a pretty strong one. Uh, keep in mind the stuff I had mentioned. I won't recap. There's a bunch of stuff I said. But, uh, yeah. Oh, I would say about this one, uh, maybe one table instead of two and positioning it in a way where it leaves more room or space. Cause like right now it's, hang on, I'll just, mm, virus, virus, dude. Thanks for the prime sub. It's your first, your first prime sub, dude. Thank you. Um, uh, so right now the angle is like this, right? And if it was if it was long this way, so if you like rotated it, so someone would stand here and work, uh, and do their laundry. I think you would have a little bit more visual room, and compositionally, it wouldn't be so crowded. Wait a minute, virus. This is not your first prime, is it? That's that's weird. Well, that's weird. All right, on to Discord critiques. Enjoy the music while I get that set up.
I always subscribe with Prime. I don't subscribe, but when I do, I subscribe with Prime. All right, be right back.